Second John Epistle, verse 1. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake which dwelleth in us shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Now we left off with peace. Our 19th recording. Peace is a noun from Latin to uh, please, appease. Number one, in a general sense, a state of quiet or tranquility. Freedom from disturbance. Applicable to society, to individuals, or temper of the mind. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. It's not the freedom of or from war. Putting down arms. Listen, there is no peace to the wicked, saith the Lord. You're not going to have a worldwide peace while you got sin running rampant. You're not going to have peace in this world till the Lord Jesus Christ is seated upon David's throne in Jerusalem in the millennium when Satan is bound for a thousand years. There is no peace to the wicked. Even Jesus says that the world does have a peace, but it's not like the peace of God. The world's peace comes with strings attached and money to be involved. You cannot have a peace in this world with Satan and his forces and God and his forces and Christians living like the devil and devils living like Christians. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 11, 14. 2 Corinthians 11, 14. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers be also transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their deeds. But you're not going to have a peace when you've got Satan with his preachers and priests in religion. Because the religion of Satan and his ministers have perverted people and their souls. That's not peace. We are about to study in this lesson, deceivers. There is no peace on the heavenly battlefield for a Christian. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. And we fight a spiritual battle with spiritual weaponry and armor. If God has given us an armor in Ephesians chapter 6, including a sword and and defense and offensive weapons as shield and all that. Why would he give us that if there's a peace? There will be no eternal peace until Satan and his forces are sealed in the lake of fire. There is a spiritual peace. A tranquility in hard times. God can give you a peace that when your life is turned upside down where a person that is lost who rely on alcohol or pills or something or someone would go bonkers. But in your life, relying and trusting in God, yea, all the things may come at you, you're at a rest. You're tranquil. To be stable when the threat of man, Satan, or even yourself is present or forthcoming. When man has come to do you wrong. When Satan is on attack against you like he'd done with Job. Job was, was given attack of Satan and man. The Bible records that he did not sin, and yet for seven days he had peace. Went into the valley or walked into the valley of life, and no mountain could be seen. You can be your own threat. 
the way you're living, the way you are not living. Again, I said that if you live godly, you're going to suffer persecution. You have taken it on yourself to do what the Bible says to do, and God will give you peace even amongst the battle. And there are things in your life that you do sin, and the consequences, be not deceived, God's not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You can still have peace in those trials, in those sowing. That's the mercy and grace of God. That is something that Satan cannot give you or will give you. He is a liar when you think you've got his peace. When you run out of money, you can't afford the doctor or the, or the pills or the booze. Man, Satan, or life is digging more with a shovel called problems. Everyone saved or lost from birth to death will have problems. One shape or form or another. All kinds of sides. You are destined to suffer with problems. Salvation will not get rid of it. And every baby in this world is born with a shovel to dig even more into the valley. It's not bad enough that you go into a valley of life. Is that the shovel you have, you dig deeper into the valley. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ and God, your restful calm and temperance. That's the key. Is there really peace of the world with Satan when it comes to, to artificial means of drugs or booze or what have you? What about when those things wear off? A complete drunkard night, and then what about the next day? And you got to go back and go back and go back. There is no relief. But in a Christian walk, when you go to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you cast your burdens upon him, and you stay with him, there's no going back because you're there. And you live and the attacks come and the Lord just comforts you. And the Lord takes the battle and takes the fight. But I'm a Christian and I'm suffering and I don't have that peace and I'm in turmoil. That's because you have walked away from the Lord. You, not are, you are not under his sheltering. You are not under his comfort. You've decided you can do it yourself. You have told God, get off the throne, I will sit, and I will do my own ways. Because the same one, God and Jesus Christ, that gives the peace, is walking with you in peace. You've got to walk with God to get his peace. You've got to do what God told you to do to get his peace. You cannot be in any form of rebellion. And as we go back to 2 John, grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Our holy heavenly Father, you can't even look at men. There are children today that are getting grace and mercy from their parents and they don't deserve it. They deserve a whip on the behind. But mother and father either or will buy them, get them everything they want. But our Holy Father will not do that. And there is times as recorded in Hebrew that the Father in heaven, as our as we are his children, needs to get the whip out, needs to chastise us, and then the peace is broken because we have sinned, we have done wrong. Now let's look at the Trinity when it comes to peace. We'll take our study now to Galatians 5.22. Forgive me for snuffing allergies. 
Galatians 5.22. Again, this study is for all ages of Christianity. From the very newborn babe that just got saved to the aged. We're going to look at all the doctrines. We are going to spend the time that we need. And whether or two the rapture happens, we're going to go about this for all to learn. You may be lost. And maybe these studies will bring you to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to grow thereby. So I'm going to stop as we go along and study as we head to Galatians 5.22. Going to stop at principal things and that may not have to do with 2 John. But to help you be learned as we go through 2 John. 2 John is a wonderful book that we studied that. There's all kinds of doctrines and learning to be learned. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now it says in 22 of Ephesians 5, the fruit of the Spirit. That capital S is the Holy Spirit. There is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now there are nine things mentioned. But what is so particular about that word fruit from a King James 1611 Bible that you need? And we won't get into that study. But the King James 1611 Bible says fruit singular. Yep, but there are nine fruits. You are able to get all nine of these fruits in one dosage. We've got today on the market in your store, you can go to the store and you can get apple and mango. You can get grape and cranberry. You can get an orange and tangerine. And it's in one container. And no one questions that. But the fruit of the Spirit is you can get that one fruit and it contains nine fruits as one. That means these are all together you cannot lack. If you lack love, you don't have the fruit of the Spirit. Read 1 John. The second one is joy. If you lack joy in your life, you don't have the Spirit's fruit. You can't have love, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, if you don't have joy. And the third one, peace, this is the one we're talking about now, is you may have love, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and you have no peace in your life. That's not you having the fruit of the Holy Spirit. They all come as one. When you are lacking one of these fruits as a fruit, you are lacking from the Holy Spirit because of something that's involved in your life. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Well, that's what we're studying now. The love of God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that was given by God. And God's love. Joy from the Lord Jesus Christ that he, he died. He was buried. He arose from the grave that we may have victory over death. And the peace from the Holy Spirit. Peace is the fruit of God. Look at 2 John 3 again. Look at 2 John chapter 3. Grace be with you. Mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a fruit that's given to you when you do what God wants you to do. To be absent is to be absent of the, of the fruit of the blessings that God has for you. And seriously, if you are lacking, you need to get down on your knees. You need to get along with God away from everything that's a commotion and a distraction and ask God honestly from your heart. Let's go outside to James chapter 1, I believe. It's 1 or 2. 
Hebrew James. I always wanted to have a son to name Hebrew and James. I like I like the Hebrew James. Is there something about I like that? Uh, Hebrew uh, James chapter one, verse five. If any of you lack wisdom. You don't know about a particular sin in your life. You don't know what's not giving you the peace. You don't have it. And you're seriously looking. You want to be blessed by God and you want to be a blessing to God. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Too many of you are afraid not to ask God because you know what? God will give you the answer. And you may not want to give that up. That giveth to all men liberally. God will give you an answer. And upbraideth not. God is not going to say, oh, that was a stupid question. You moron. God's not going to do that. God is not going to whip you because you came and asked him a question. And it shall be given him. God will give you the answer. Now it's up to you to do what God tells you to do. Because look at verse 6. But let him ask in faith, believing, nothing wavering. What's the wavering? God gives you the answer and you walk away. Well, that wasn't really God. If you are lacking of the fruit of the Spirit, there is something lacking in your life towards God. Probably sin and rebellion. Peace is the fruit of God. 2 John 3 it tells you from God and from Jesus Christ. Why would God and Jesus withhold that from you if you are his son? He wouldn't. Unless you have a problem. The Trinity. The proof. We are getting ready to study people who claim Jesus is not God. That is going to be our study later on in 2 John. And they come to your door. But our study is to prove otherwise. With Galatians chapter 5 that we read, the peace of God is a fruit. It is never a pill. It is not a drink. It is not anything you have to buy. It is free. God will not charge you for his peace. And there's no trait. It's a fruit, but there's no tree. Planted by God sells its own fruit. You never walk up to an apple tree and put 25 cents into the bark and, and an apple comes out. You don't walk up to an orange tree and slide a dollar into the dollar slot and out comes an orange. Man does that. A fruit tree out in nature. If you walk up to a tree and it's there and it's a fig tree and it's the proper season, you can pick a fig and you can eat it. As a matter of fact, under the law, they were spoken that you were allowed people who are traveling to sit down and eat as long as they didn't put it into their bag, as long as they didn't harvest. But they can sit down inside the road and eat the fruit of the tree without price. And that would show you that the spirit of the Holy Spirit and his fruit that God and the Lord Jesus Christ gives to his second John is free and available. And you don't need a bushel of fruits. You don't need a sack of fruits. You need one fruit that contains nine fruits. You can never say, I got more fruit than that Christian, because every Christian is entitled to the one fruit. You don't have fruits. Every Christian is giving 
of fruit. And you can go back to Galatians 5.22 to read them again, the nine fruits. Only man sells the fruit that God created. Even the tree of the knowledge of good and evil did not cost money to Eve or Adam. It was free. The tree of life was free. Yet you go to a store and they charge you. Adam and Eve had any and all rights to all the trees in the garden. Every single fruit bearing tree Adam and Eve had application to. Only one was warned against. There are all kinds of satanic means of obtaining peace. I'm going to look now at the tree that Satan gives. His peaceful tree. Now, are pills satanic? No. But when Satan uses it to alienate you from God's fruit, now let's go back to Galatians chapter 5, 22. And let's look at the devilish fruit. Galatians 5, 22. When Satan gives you a pill for joy, and happiness that is satanic because God's joy is not a pill it's a fruit you can have joy serving the Lord and not have to have a pill Satan gives you a pill on Satan's tree his fruit one of them is a pill Nothing wrong with pills. Got a headache? Take an aspirin. But don't take a pill for joy that God can give you. Listen, the world will give you anything to cure you as long as you have the money. So the fruit of Satan's tree costs money. He has a little slot or he has a little... Uh, dollar bill dispenser that you have to put money into to get his fruit. Can you live a life without pills? Yes, you can. But when we waver against God, long suffering. I got a lot of pain. Long suffering. I got to take a pill to relax me because, you know, my boss is always on me, this and that. Gentleness. Temperance. Love. There's a pill for everything on the market. And when Satan gives it to you to, to, get what God is offering, then it becomes satanic. And when your money is spent, then where is the cure or peace? Here's a prescription. Okay, now that we have this Obamacare and everything's been messed up in the insurance bracket, you can't go to your doctor no more. You can't get the prescription. Listen, in the state of Florida that we live in, you can't get a particular pain medicine. You have to go to a pain management clinic. It is illegal otherwise. And even the government has taken this pill and is trying to get rid of it. Because it has been 
overly used by the drug makers and the druggies who do it illegally. But what if all the pills and medication drops? What if there be no more? Where would you get your peace from? When the money is spent and there is no more money, you can't afford it. Where's your peace? Where's your long suffering? And you're craving for that, whatever it is, booze, pill, whatever it is. And you're not craving or relying on God. Now, where is your dependence from? And yet Jesus says, listen, they that are sick need a physician. But Asa sought the doctors more than he sought God. I'm, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with taking a prescription medicine if you relied on God first. Listen, you prayed about it, you love the Lord, and he's giving you the fruit of the Spirit, and the availability of having a pill helps you. Well, amen, glory to God. But what if God puts that trial in your life where you cannot get that medicine to show you where your reliance is on? How about that? Do you keep on going on with the Lord, or do you keep on thirsting for what the world's giving you? Satan always puts one into a situation and then entraps that person without any means of an escape. And that defies what God does. The Bible records in Corinthians, God will give you a way to escape. Satan does not. Listen, when those people that Satan has empowered to believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and he's not, other than Jesus Christ, when they are cast into the lake of fire with him, there is no means for escape. They are bound into an eternal, eternal state without love, without joy, without peace, without long-suffering, without gentleness, without goodness, without faith, without meekness, and without temperance. And for eternity, they will live without that fruit of the Spirit where they had relied on a pill, a prescription, a, 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 a fluid, another person, or what have you. As the prodigal son, only his father waited and prayed for his return. And the prodigal son lost all his money that the father gave him. But the father was praying and waiting. Where was Satan? Using him more and more and more. Till he had nothing. Satan in the world says cash, check, or credit. You know what God says? Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things are freely given to us of God. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let us that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whoso will let him take of the water of life freely. God never charges. All the charges were placed upon his son. Christ took the penalty of sin. 
All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Is it God that persecutes the one that lives right? No, it's Satan in the world and other Christians that will take the peace from you. That is not to be taken. Let me just check here. I might, might want to get into something. Um, let's read on. Read Isaiah 53 on God, God's line of credit. Let's go there. Let's go read Isaiah 53. I'm not going to. We'll go read it. Okay. This is God's credit card application. This is where you sign on the dotted line with your heart and with your mouth. Okay? Isaiah 53. This is how you obtain peace. This is what Jesus Christ signed that we may have peace. Ready? Who has believed our report? I have. April 27th, 1987. I had to think I was going to say 2007. 1987, April, I received the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the report. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I revealed the Lord's arm at least to try to every Saturday as we go downtown and pass out gospel tracts, hold signs, and try to preach on the street. For he, Jesus Christ, he, it's not they, it's not the nation of Israel. Israel will say that this is them. It's not. It's singular. For he shall grow up before him, God, as a tender plant. Jesus Christ wasn't a brute. He wasn't, uh, you know, a boxer or a fighter. And he wasn't a sissy. A tender plant is one that is growing. It needs to be watched. It needs to be cared for. And as a root out of dry ground. No water. Satan has no water in the ground. For Jesus is the water of life. He, Jesus, had no form or commonness. And when we shall see him, Jesus... There is no beauty that we should desire him, Jesus. Jesus' picture would not be on a poster, would not be on a magazine cover. He was a Jew. Girls would not fall in love with him and his beauty. He is despised and rejected of men. The very ones that he died for. For many shall go the way to Broadway, and that leads to destruction. Few that go therein. And acquainted with grief. His grief, his despisement, his rejection brought me peace. And we, Stiley Hayward, hid as it were our faces from him, Jesus. For, set, for 18 years, I hid from Jesus Christ. Until April 27, 1987. I poked out from the trees when God finally called me again, faithfully, and, and didn't have to. And we esteemed him not. For 18 years, I didn't care who Jesus Christ was. Grown up as a Roman Catholic. There he was nailed to the cross. Do your fee fi fo fum Go eat him and go drink him and then I'm done. For 18 years, I did that. I didn't care who he was. 
I didn't want to know who he was. If I had wanted to know, if I had been searching for Jesus Christ, I would have been saved a lot earlier than 1987. Surely he, Jesus, has borne our griefs. Does that sound like peace to you? Yeah, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. It sure wasn't for Jesus. And when you're living a grief-stricken and, and sorrowful life that is rejected and, and uh, uh, sorrows and grief and, and, and despisement, you are carrying something that Jesus already carried. It is a burden that you don't have to carry. It was already carried. And you're telling Jesus, thank you very much, but I can do it myself. Thank you. And then you turn around and say, I got faith. No, you don't. And carried our sorrows. Let him carry your sorrows. Get down your knees. Find where the trouble is between you and God. Get it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get it settled. Get it right. Get the fruit of the Spirit, which are nine fruits, and you can have a joyful Christianity even amongst troubles and tribulation. And to some of you, you, that sounds stupid and it sounds weird and it doesn't sound right, but you don't understand the spiritual things. I do. I've had a point in my time in my life a few years ago that people were coming to me and saying, with all the trouble we were, I was going through, some were saying they were proud of me. Some were saying, how you do it? Some were saying, were saying, why don't you break down? And it's like, what troubles? Am I having troubles? And the peace of God carried me through. When a doctor comes into the into your, into your hospital and just tells you right off the bat, well, we don't need to amputate. Quick, give me an ambient. No. I didn't need that. Quick, give me a, 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 a laxative. Give me a sedative. Give me something. Give me for, something for my nerves. I didn't need that. I just spoke up and said, um, amputation? <laughs> what are you talking about? And thank the Lord that after the doctor and I spoke about, and thank the Lord that in tears of God's mercy and grace that I would have lost a body part of my body that I still have today. And even if I had lost that body part, well, to God be the glory, you get up out of the hospital bed, you get walking. He was bruised. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. Should have been me that was abused. It should have been me that was whipped. It should have been me nailed to that cross. It should have been me that went to hell. Not Christ. What did he do? He was sinless. He is the son of God. He is perfection. He is the lamb of God. What did he do? I tell you what he did. He took everything for me that I may have his fruit. You check out those fruits and you find those fruits that are in the one fruit that is found in the attribute of God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son. The reason why the rapture has not happened yet because Peter says that God is long-suffering and not willing that any should perish. Yet, but he loves us enough that he wants his bride to be called up. But he's long-suffering enough for the sinner to repent and get right. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. There's peace.
He took our punishment. And with his stripes, the cat of nine tails, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. I had a time in my life I backslid from the Lord. I'm not proud of it. I am not happy of it. I don't want to talk about it. We have turned everyone to his own way. I've gone my own way daily. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Christ bore our sins on that cross. He, God, or Jesus, was oppressed. And he, Jesus, was afflicted. Should have been me. Yet he, Jesus, opened not his, Jesus' mouth. I can't shut up from complaining. I'll tell you the truth. I complain. Jesus never did, and he was innocent. He was declared by Pilate to be innocent three times. Four. He was declared innocent by Herod. He was declared innocent by Judas. And he did not speak his mind, did not open his mouth, and still went to Calvary's cross. You want to talk about fruit of the Spirit? Give me a red light and I'll show you how much temperance I have. Isn't that one of the fruit? He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He didn't call for a lawyer. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of living. They crucified him. From the for the transgression of my people, the Jews, and all mankind, was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked. He died with two thieves. And with the rich, his death. He was buried in a rich man's tomb. Because he had done no violence. Sinless. Innocent. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Oh, you can find deceit in my mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Should it please the Lord to bruise me. He... God had put him, Jesus, to grieve. That doesn't sound like peace to me. When thou shalt make his soul, Jesus' soul, an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. That's me. I am the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ, declared by Isaiah 53. Of anything that is not peaceful, Christ went through that I may have that peace that John writes the peace of God and Jesus Christ he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. God was satisfied with my sins upon the finished work of Jesus alone, the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, not of works, lest I should boast, and I'm not misquoting that scripture, because I cannot do anything. My peace, my joy, my long-suffering, my patience, my temperance, my awe, from the Spirit, the fruit is of from Jesus alone. And of God, we saw in Second John. 
and Jesus is God and God is Jesus and we're going to study when we get to by the end of this chapter we're going to look at the Jehovah Witnesses and all those that say that Jesus is not God and God is not Jesus and find them to be faulty and liars now let's go to one verse and we'll close 1st John 1 and how is this accomplished 1st John 1 9 1st John 1 9 if we confess our sins he God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and when I put my sins under the blood when you put your sins under the blood then you can get Galatians 5.22. What do you get for putting your sins under the blood? What do you get? Why do I get? Upon all that is based upon Jesus Christ, when I put my sins under the blood, I get love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. I get all those for confessing and putting my sins under the blood. I get a restored fellowship with God and I get his fruit. I get the same attribute that the Holy Spirit has. I get the same attribute that Jesus Christ has. I get the same attribute that God has. I even get more because these things were not with Jesus when he died on that cross. When he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And as a born-again Christian, God said, I will never leave thee or forsake thee. You cannot pluck me out of Jesus' hand. I am eternally saved. These things are written that you may know you have eternal life. And at Jesus' time in his life on that cross, God turned his back on him. I get the fruit of the Spirit by confessing the holy blood the sinless blood, the sacrifice of what Christ has done for me. Now let me ask you one more question. And we'll close. Okay? Satan says, and the world says, cash, check, or credit. When it comes to God, you know what you know what the expression is? Blood bank. How about those two words? It ain't cash, it ain't check, it ain't credit. It is the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that cleanses me from all. Did you check that verse in John? Did you check that verse in the Gospel of John? John chapter 1. Let's see if I can find it real quick. It was one gift, wasn't it? One fruit, excuse me. The fruit of the Spirit. Well, watch this. John chapter 1. Running out of time here. John chapter 1. Let me find it here real quick. Oh, forgive me, forgive me. John says, Behold the Lamb of God. Right here, 29. John 1, 29. Well, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Get this. It was one fruit, but it was nine fruits, wasn't it? Right? Uh, Galatians 5. Watch this. John 1, 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming on to him and saying, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin. That's singular, too. And how many sins are there? More than nine. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, will take away your sin, which is all sins, but lumped into one. And he'll give you one fruit, which is nine fruits. Look at that. Now, isn't that a great exchange? You can take money, you can exchange it for foreign currency, you can take gold and, and put it to exchange for money, but God will take your sin and exchange it for a fruit 
that is fruits. God will take your sin, which is all sins, and give you a fruit, which is fruits. Blessed be the name and the glories of the Lord God and Father and Lord Jesus Christ that is my Savior, that took away my sins, that suffered what Isaiah ch chapter 53 said, all that that is not peaceful, and took it that I may have peace. And when you are absent from peace as a born-again Christian, there is sin in your life, there is rebellion in your life, you need 1 John 1, 9. And if you are not saved, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your heart needs to repent. Your mouth must confess unto salvation. And you need to do what God tells you to do. And you can get that peace of God. Or you can just bear it yourself. Saved or lost. I don't want to bear it myself. I, I proclaimed on this video many, many things that I am a sinner. I'm not afraid to say it. I am sorry I am. I confess my sins, but I am not sinless. Go back and read 1 John 1.10 and see what that says. Have a good day. We'll continue this next time. 2 John. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen. Anyway.